What's going on everyone? As you can imagine, I am extremely excited for today's project. We are gonna be starting on the RM250 engine build. We're going all the way up from the cases. As you can see back here, we're gonna be installing the crankshaft, transmission, gear shift stuff. We're gonna be making a lot of progress today, so why don't we jump into it and get going. So here's where we're at. Got the cases ready to go. They're looking sweet. Got new bearings installed. Crankshaft is rebuilt. This is an OEM crank with a Pro-X rod. So first step is to install the crankshaft into the left crankcase. I like to set up the case on a set of blocks. That way I have an even, stable surface to work on. I should do right there. Should have enough clearance for that crank to go through the bearing. Now, if you guys saw the video I posted the other day on installing bearings, I used a combination of heat and ice to drop those bearings right in. Now I'm gonna try the same style method with the crankshaft. I'm gonna cool down the crankshaft with some dry ice that I have here. Heat up that bearing. That's why I didn't install the seal yet. Can heat it up with a torch and hopefully that eases the installation. Now I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna get the dry ice on the bearing surface of the crankshaft. I might have to jerry-rig it, duct tape some uh, dry ice to it. I don't know, but we'll make it work. All I know is we gotta move fast because this dry ice is starting to melt. I reckon we're just gonna bust out the uh, old duct tape and duct tape some dry ice to that crankshaft. I do not know if this is going to work, but let's give it a shot. Ooh, that is getting freaking cold. Sounds like I'm murdering the crankshaft. Have another little campfire in here. All right, we're going to have to move fast. Pull off my contraption here and drop her right in. Look like it worked. Let's give it a little tap just to make sure. Sweet, I think we're in business. Well, that worked out pretty slick. I'm gonna give that a shot on the uh, other side of the crank when I put the cases together too. That should make it pretty easy. All right, this is where the fun begins and it really starts to get real. So we've got a lot of stuff to install right here. Some transmission shafts, gear shift components, so let's jump into it. Here we have the Trusteel and the Helo Concepts engine stand. So the engine mounts on it with the studs front and back. You can rotate the engine all different directions. It's got a drain pan underneath, super handy to have. So why don't we get set up on it? Pretty freaking sweet, eh? Definitely makes things easier. You're able to get that engine in any position you need. So I'm gonna have to get that uh, transmission all in order, get everything squared away there. So if you guys remember right, I did have a damaged gear on one of these shafts. Can't remember which one it was. The uh, transfer pins or pegs were all jacked up on it. So I do have that gear right here. I have to pull things apart to install it. And like always, I have a parts diagram here just to make sure the washers and clips and gears are all in the right position. I've made that mistake before. I left out a washer and I had to pull everything back apart to fix that. So save yourself from some headache, get a diagram. You can print these out for free from Rocky Mountain. So it looks like it was this gear right here that was damaged. You can see that really sharp edge on that peg there. So it should only be a matter of pulling off this last gear, maybe a washer, a clip or two, and slip that new gear on. Let's go ahead and see what we're working with here. Looks like we got a washer on the end, a gear, and this should be the uh, culprit gear here that's damaged. Yeah, those edges are rounded off pretty good. Glad we're replacing that one. While I'm in here, I'm just going to pull things apart a little further, wipe it down. So there's a little washer that came off the back of that gear. That's why it's really handy to have those diagrams. It can get a little hectic once you start pulling things apart and lose track of where things go. Now this is the difference between a new gear and a used gear. You can see how rounded off those edges are. They're supposed to be nice and square. So that should make a huge difference in the uh, shifting here. I'm going to pull up the diagram, see what uh, order we're in. Wow, it actually looks like there's a washer that goes in between. Yeah, someone had this together wrong. That washer was after the uh, second to last gear. Got a washer that goes on there, then the collar, 
the actual gear with the pegs facing inward. I'm gonna put a little oil on this. Slide that gear on. And then we just have the gear and then the washer. So this gear had the rounded edge facing out and the washer. All right, that shaft looks good to go. Actually, just for uh, security, I'm gonna go through and check all the rest of these. So both the training shafts checked out fine. Everything's good to go. So I'm gonna take some oil, squirt it around inside the bearings here, get everything all lubed up, drizzle a little bit on the shafts as well and I should be able to just pop them right in. So the oil that I'm using inside the bottle is just the gear oil that I'm using in the gearbox when I got this thing all together. Now I've always found it easiest to install the shafts together. So just mesh up all the gears like so. Get the counter shaft started through the bearing. Just kind of wiggle them into place. There we go, snapped all the way in. Make sure that main shaft is seated all the way. Looks good. Take this oil once again and get it in between the gears here. And so you'll notice once you get the shafts in that it'll actually bind. And that's because we don't have the gear shift forks and drum in quite yet. So don't be freaked out. It's only one of these gears that needs to be lifted up. I'll show you what that looks like. So now you can see that thing spins freely. So let's go ahead and get those uh, forks and drum installed. Now it's gonna be a little easier to get that drum and forks in with the engine tilted up like that. Now first up is the drum. Get this thing all lubed up. Little lube never hurts. And now we've got the shift forks and the shift pins. So on the counter shaft, two forks go on this side. And it looks like just one fork on the main shaft. Now I'm gonna have to do a little trial and error here. I didn't keep the fork separated or like organized. Yep, that's the one right there. And now for this side with these shift forks, there's only three or there's three different sizes here. So it's pretty hard to mess them up. A little easier if you just keep them organized though. Actually for this one, I have to pull the drum out temporarily. Help get it into place. That looks like the one. And then we've just got one left up here. Pop that drum back in. Line up your forks with the slots in the drum. Give you a little closer view of how these forks and the pins go into the drum. So you just swing it over, goes right into the slot in the drum. Sometimes you gotta lift it up a little bit, just like that, right into that groove. Now it's time for the pins. Lube these babies up, slip it in, make sure that thing seats all the way into the crank, uh, the crank case there. Make sure you get plenty of oil inside of there. Get that thing pushed all the way down. We're gonna spin the shafts and make sure it all spins smoothly and doesn't bind up. Yep, both directions look good. Now the last few things we'll need before we set the cases together are the dowel pins. These are like locating pins. They go on one on either side. Just help make sure everything's lined up properly. And we'll also need the center gasket. So for the dowel pins, gotta make sure these have anti-seize on them. If they get seized up or rusted, corroded inside the case, it's a huge, huge pain to split the cases down the road. So save, oh, so save yourself or the next owner a lot of hassle and throw some anti-seize on these. Put a little bit inside that hole they go in. This will kind of help pop those things into place too. Now this anti-seize stuff is really nasty. If you get it on your clothes or on your skin, it'll really stain. I don't know what's in it that makes it so freaking potent, but it sure is nasty stuff. This rear one's being a little stubborn there there we go now before i put the gasket on i like to put a thin layer of grease on the gasket surface now putting grease on the gasket does a couple different things it makes sure that the gasket stays in place before you get the other case half on and also for any reason if you have to split the cases again it uh, prevents the gasket from completely sticking and as you pull the cases apart that'll prevent or the grease will prevent the gasket from tearing. So yeah, just a little thing I like to do just for safe measures. All right, let's pop this gasket into position. 
it'll just kind of locate itself on those dowel pins. Kind of just tack it into place, line up all those holes. That's where that grease comes in really handy. It'll allow you to kind of stick it exactly where you want it. And I'll also do the other case half here, do the surface as well. So I've got the right case ready to go. Got some anti-seize in these dowel pin holes. Got grease on the gasket surface. So now I'm gonna try the dry ice method again, kind of pack it around, hold it on with some towels and then heat up that bearing with the torch. Ooh, that is freaking cold. Ooh. Yeah, we're definitely gonna wanna put some uh, oil this crank up so that way it doesn't rust with all that condensation. All right, I'm gonna give this a little two-handed effort and hold the crank and heat up this bearing at the same time. All right, let's give her hell. Gotta keep wiggling this thing on. Kinda tough to get everything lined up. All right, that's about as far as we're gonna get. We're gonna have to use the uh, good old crank puller on this one. Actually, I'm gonna give the old rubber mallet a try. Just tap on the engine mounting surfaces. We should be good. All right, we got the cases pretty much all the way together. So I'm gonna get some of the case bolts in on the other side. Got my freshly replated hardware here. Pop in a few bolts, spin these things in and just cinch them down so that way our uh, cases stay together. Man, this thing is starting to look good. I'm getting pumped. Okay, before this engine falls off the stand, I'm gonna have to kind of resituate things on here. All right, that's a little more stable. Now before this dry ice dries out, that didn't really make any sense. Before this dry ice cools off or uh, freaking melts, Jesus Christ, I can't talk. I am going to pop in a few other bearings here. I've got the governor shaft bearing as well as the water pump bearing for the inner clutch cover. So I'm gonna throw those in a Ziploc bag, get them cooled down, torch the case, and they should just pop right in. All right, I'm gonna pop in the rest of these case bolts and then run through a few checks just to make sure everything is ready for the next step. Now, a few things to check over once you get those cases made together is, first off, you wanna make sure that crank spins smoothly. There's no drag there. If you do have excessive drag, that could be because the crank isn't centered in between the cases. You can correct that by tapping on the end of the crank a little bit with a rubber mallet. Or another possibility is your main bearings aren't seated in the case all the way. So you might have to take things back apart, seat those, and uh, that should correct it. But absolutely make sure your crank spins smoothly. And then check your transmission shafts. Those should spin smoothly as well. No excessive drag with no crazy in and out play. A little bit is acceptable. Crank should be completely tight in and out. Now to touch a little further on putting the cases together, I would say the dry ice method worked pretty good on the left side, simply because you can just pop the crank in. On the right side, it wasn't quite as effective because you have so many other things to line up here with the shifting and transmission stuff. And by the time you've got to the crank, those have already equalized in temperature, so it doesn't really have the same effect. Now, another option for putting the cases together is a crank puller. This attaches to the end of the crank and pulls the crank through the bearing. This thing is from Tusk. I've had pretty good luck with it in the past. Also, if you're having trouble getting the cases to go all the way together, chances are you've got something bound up with the transmission, shifting stuff, or those locating pins aren't quite meshing together. So check all that stuff. Next up, we've got some crank seals to install. So I got the seals in and it's always nice to have before pictures or some sort of reference so you know how far or how deep to go with the seals. 
If you don't, they're supposed to sit just below the case, like right at the bottom of that little bevel there. So I ended up using a tusk steering stem and solar kit to push in those seals. Comes with this long adapter or long bar, a few adapters, and they actually work great for pushing in crank seals as well. Now on these longer videos, I always like to take a little halftime break, do something else, maybe do a giveaway. So let me pull something down off the shelf and show you guys. Now what we've got here is a bin full of these cleaning wheels that I sell on my website, Prime. I know you guys have been buying these wheels by the truckload and loving them. So what I'm doing with these is I am giving them away. Now about one in every 50 to 70 pads gets squished in shipping or squished during manufacturing and they end up with a little thinner edge here in some spots. Not a huge deal, ain't gonna affect their, the uh, function of it, but my policy is if I'm not 100% on anything, I don't sell it. So I've got about maybe what 100 of these that I'm gonna give away. So you guys have until Friday, April 3rd to get one of these wheels. So all you have to do is submit your order on Prime for $10 or more. I'll throw in a wheel completely free. So these are the finer type wheels. They're excellent for cleaning and shining up aluminum. I use them on my 250, my CR, for the frame, the swing arm, the engine, linkage, all sorts of stuff. Lots of stuff you can do with these. So now's your chance to test one of these out for free. So when you're over on the store and in the shopping cart, all you have to do to let me know that you want a wheel, go in this instruction box, type in cleaning wheel. That's it. And so you guys have until once again, Friday, April 3rd to submit your orders over $10 and I'll throw in one of those wheels for free. All right, let's go finish up this RM engine. Oh, and by the way, that uh, hole I punched in the wall a while back, I covered that up with a clock. You guys seem to love to point out that hole in the last couple of videos. All right, I'm gonna get to work on this side of the engine, and I'm gonna start with the gear shift assembly. So all these parts right here, they go on the end of the shift drum, and their basic function is to allow you to go through the gears on the bike. Now to get the shift assembly inside the end of the drum, you wanna pinch these dogs here, hold them together, and the whole thing should just slide right on. Or not, we're gonna have to rearrange this a little bit. All right, we should be able to get it this time. There we go. Next up, we've got the tensioner assembly. This basically just holds tension on the drum. We've got a little spring that goes on the arm, like so. A little washer that goes behind, and a shoulder bolt. You gotta make sure that shoulder locks in with the arm. Seats all the way. And the arm goes in there just like this. It's kind of a two-handed effort, getting things in place. Let's get this thing cinched down most of the way. Make sure that shoulder goes in on the arm. Actually, we can just tighten it down all the way. Then make sure your spring is locked into the arm, like that. Grab yourself a nice set of needle nose pliers. Grab the end of the spring and bring it over the post to set the tension. Just like that. We can test to make sure that thing is holding tension. Yep, looks like it's working good. Now, something that's very important with these parts, since they're always in use when the engine is running, you want to use some Loctite. So blue Loctite on the screws for the plate, as well as the tensioner arm. And then red Loctite, the really tough stuff on this pin that is very common to come loose, as well as the center pin for the drum. Next up, we have the shift shaft. Check out this beauty. It's all replated, looking brand new again. And make sure you have a washer on here. That's very important, easy to lose that washer. And like always, gotta throw some lube on the shaft before you shove her in. It goes right into that hole there and make sure you line it up with the gears on the assembly here just like that now the reason why I like to assemble the gear shift assembly before I do anything else on this side of the engine is so that way I can test the transmission make sure it all shifts good before I get any further 
I'm gonna grab a shifter, throw it on the shift shaft on the other side, and then just go through all the gears. So you have to have the shaft spinning in order for it to shift. Think about like when you're trying to find neutral, you're rocking your bike back and forth. Same concept. So we're gonna go all the way down. So that's first gear right there. We're gonna find neutral, halfway up, right there. Now in order for the transmission to be in neutral, these two shafts have to spin independent of each other. So if I hold the counter shaft on the other side, spin the main shaft, you can see this shaft isn't spinning. So that is indeed neutral. When I go down into first, right there, it wants to spin. All right, I'm gonna go back down into first gear and then go up through all five gears just to make sure they all work good. So this should be neutral again, right there. This is gonna be second, third, fourth, and fifth. Yep, all works good, sweet. I apologize if you guys hear some freaking bumping in the background. My wife's upstairs getting busy after it, working out, she's been freaking quarantined with me, so just trying to stay busy. Now with the gear shift assembly all finished up and ready to rock, we are on to the kickstart shaft. Now the only thing that needs to be lined up on here is, let's see here, there's a dot right there. That needs to be lined up with the dot on this gear as well. And then on this side, the spring just goes into this hole slips in there, plastic guide slides over, slot goes over the spring, and the spring goes on the back. Just throw a little bit of oil here in the crankcase. Pop that in, spin it all the way forward. Now we're gonna bring the spring all the way around. Grab your needle nose pliers, bring it all the way over to the hole. Pop that in and we are done. The Kickstarter also has an idler gear, so we're gonna pop that on right now as well. Got a washer and a clip. And next up, we've got the clutch. Now this is the entire clutch assembly. Everything checked out fine upon inspection. Plates measured out great. Basket, hubs, all that is golden. The only thing I'm replacing are the clutch springs. I've got a set from Tusk. And I'm replacing this one-time use washer. Always good to replace those. And of course, got the diagram here to make sure everything's going together right. There's a lot going on here with washers and bearings and all that. So I'm gonna start with the actuator arm. This actually goes on the flywheel side of the engine. Always good to have that in before you start assembly on the clutch side. Now the clutch arm just goes right here with a little help of some oil. I think it should be set somewhere around right there. Flip this thing around. Now the first thing that goes in on this side is the actuator rod that connects with the arm we just installed. Let's go ahead and test that, make sure this is working right. Yep, then we've got a collar and a bearing. Some people say I go over the top with lube, but honestly, what can it hurt? Now the basket goes on. Got a nice Henson billet basket here, followed by a washer. Basically anything that's moving or gonna be rubbing on each other, throw some oil on it. That's kind of my rule of thumb. Now the center hub. And this is where that one-time use washer comes in. And finally, we've got the nut that holds all of this onto the transmission shaft. Tighten that thing down. I'm gonna have to find the torque spec on that one. All right, so the spec for this nut is 65 foot-pounds. Set up the torque wrench here. And I'll have to dig out the tool that holds the clutch hub as well. You know what, I'm an idiot. I forgot to put the primary gear on before I put the clutch on. Let's go ahead and get that on real quick. Glad I caught it right now before I had this whole clutch torqued and everything. I believe it just sits 
flush. Yeah, it just sits flush with the end of the crank like that. We'll just get that bolt installed a little bit later on. That wasn't so bad. So this is the clutch holding tool. You're able to grab onto the hub with it. You just wanna barely clamp down on the hub. Let's go ahead and see what we can do here. All right, that did the trick. Now it is possible to tighten down that center nut without the holding tool. You could install all the plates and you'd have to torque it with an impact. It's really hard to uh, hold everything from spinning. So these tools definitely come in handy. You can use them to hold the flywheel as well. So this is a Tusk brand from Rocky Mountain. I will have it linked down below. Now this is where the one-time use washer comes into play. So basically you're gonna bend up the edge of it to lock against the nut and that'll prevent the nut from ever spinning loose. We're gonna grab it with a pair of pliers. I'm gonna do it on that side. Maybe go 180 and do it on this side as well. All right, that should uh, keep that nut in place. So over here, I've got all the clutch fiber soaking in gear oil, just using maximum MTL. Now this is a very crucial step. If you don't soak the fibers prior to installation, you're gonna have some issues with your clutch. So I'm gonna let these soak for a couple hours and then we'll be ready to install. So the order is fiber steel, fiber steel, all the way to the end. And one thing to note on these diagrams is if you have different fibers, it looks like all of the steels are the same and all the fibers are the same. Gotta watch out, some bikes will have a different style fiber for the first fiber or the last fiber. So let's go ahead and start dropping these in. Now for the steels, you'll have a rounded edge and a flat edge. Now it doesn't really matter a whole lot which way they go, but you wanna be consistent with how you're putting them. So I always like to have the rounded edge facing out. Now at the end of the push rod goes this little lifter piece along with a bearing. Bearing faces in. I'm actually gonna dip this whole thing in oil. This goes right over the end. Now to confirm this works, I'm just using the lever on the other side. Now we've got our pressure plate. And then the clutch springs. Then I'll just go ahead and snug them up by hand. These don't need to be overly tight. Now for the primary gear, it uses a bolt and washer. You wanna use some red Loctite on this guy. Now the torque spec on the primary bolt is 50 foot pounds. By the way, I'm getting all these numbers from a service manual that I picked up from Rocky Mountain. Super handy to have, you don't have to go online and search around for uh, all those figures. Now in order to torque this, we'll have to jam the gear. Now they sell things like a gear jammer. I need to actually get one, but you could use a penny as well. So you just put a penny in between these gears here. And the penny's made of copper and that is a softer metal than the steel. So it's not gonna damage anything. Sweet, got it. Now we're gonna wanna rotate the engine or tilt it down. That way that penny falls out. Always does the trick. You wanna check in those gears, make sure there's no pieces from that penny left over. Now all we have left on this side is the exhaust valve governor parts. So this piece just fishes up through there. Snaps right onto that. Gonna throw a little blue Loctite on these screws. Then we've got a bearing and then this just pops right into there. Now for the water pump shaft, we just have a little aluminum washer that sets in the case and pop that thing in. Make sure that all spins together. Actually, I'll need to pop in the water pump seal before I put the cover on. Now on this seal, the flange faces inward. It looks kind of backwards, but that is indeed how it goes. Got some fresh dowel pins to install. Gonna throw some anti-seize on these. 
and then dab some grease on the gasket surface. Tack this gasket into place. We are now ready for the cover. Finally gonna get some color going on this engine. Actually, you know what? It's probably gonna be easier to get this water pump started in the cover beforehand. That way there's less things to line up here. Got that through. Just kind of wiggle this thing in place. If we get the impeller on here, we'll be able to kind of maneuver things a little better. All right, I think we are moving. Cool, looks like she's on. Dude, I'm really digging that color along with the brush. That combo looks so good together. It's not really like a super flashy color, but yeah, that's a nice clean look. Just gonna go ahead and pop in a few bolts and get this thing secured. Now for the water pump impeller. It only requires seven foot pounds, so I'm not gonna torque it, just kind of tighten it by hand. And keep in mind on some bikes, these are a left hand thread like this one. Get this gasket on here, and then the cover. This is gonna look sweet. Freaking grease all over everything. Now there's a lot of people that are always curious, how do you know which bolts go where? So when you push them in, you should have about, what is that, like a finger width? So about a half inch. And so if you just plug in all the bolts and one seems longer than the other, here I'll switch a few around to show you here. So if you have one that sticks farther out like that one or is further in, obviously that ain't the right bolt. And always make sure that drain bolt has an aluminum crush washer on it. Now to button up the side, all we have left is the clutch cover. I cannot wait to get this thing on. Should look pretty sweet. And when you have a little O-ring like this, it helps to have some grease in the groove. Help keep that thing in place. Or you can just simply put grease on the actual uh, O-ring there. This is looking so titties, guys. I am really pumped with how everything is coming out. Actually, forgot one thing there. We got some bling to throw on it. A little uh, Tusk anodized blue oil fill cap. Sick. That probably adds like five horsepower. All right, at this point, we are ready to flip this thing around and get to work on the other side. We've got the flywheel, the stator, the cover and a counter shaft seal kit. First up, we've got the stator. Now with the two top bolts kind of snugged up, I'm gonna rotate the stator until these two marks at the bottom line up. Kind of tighten down these bolts a little bit to hold it in place. And then we can get that third bolt in. And not a bad idea to throw some blue Loctite on those bolts too. Then we've got this badass black flywheel. Just line it up with the keyway on the crank. Throw a little blue Loctite on the threads. Tighten that puppy down. Now I would go ahead and torque this thing. The spec on it is 40 foot pounds, but my flywheel holder, for some reason, does not fit in those holes very good. I would need to drill out the flywheel a little bit. I just don't feel comfortable using this thing and having it slip and cause some damage. So I got some blue Loctite on there. I'm just gonna hit it with the uh, impact gun. And I'm gonna call that good. Now something else to consider when you're putting together an engine. So remember that primary gear bolt where you had to jam a penny in the gear to get that thing to uh, kind of jam. What you can do instead is once you have the flywheel on, you can use this holder. Again, I would use it if it fit. This model is kind of weird. I've used it on other bikes and it actually works really good at holding the flywheel in order to torque that primary gear bolt. Now, later on, we're gonna need access to this arm to get the clutch cable on, but just to get this motor kind of sealed up, I'm gonna get the gasket and cover on. Kind of wanna see how this thing's gonna look all completed. 
I break my camera. Better watch out there. One last little thing, we've got the countershaft seal kit. This one is from Tusk. So we're not going to need the seal. Already got that in there. We just need the bushing and these little o-rings. We've got two o-rings that go on. Now we've got a bushing here. Make sure you have the lip of the bushing facing in. to Kind of accommodate for those o-rings. They also provide a clip. Might as well pop this on right now as well. Check that out. That is super clean. Exactly what I was going for. Got a bunch of brushed aluminum, couple accent colors. You can tell we're gonna be doing a little bit of blue on the bike. Got some tungsten Cerakote. But that is it for the bottom end. Very excited with how it came out. And all that's left to do is the top end. So you'll see that in the next video. So my whole goal with this bike, as I discussed earlier in the project, is to do something more budget friendly. I would say for the entire engine, we're gonna be into it around 500. I didn't really go over the top with anything, just the important stuff. So I rebuilt the crank, had some cylinder work, some repaired work done on that. Did all new bearings and seals and gaskets and a bunch of odds and ends. So I would say right around 500. And like always, everything I use throughout the videos will be linked down below. That'll include the tools, the parts, all the way down to the little stuff like bearings, seals, gaskets. All that will be down below in the description. All right, let's close out this video with a few beauty shots of the bottom end. Thank you so much for tagging along with me in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and make sure you check back on the channel in a couple days. We'll be installing the top end, getting this engine all tidied up and done. Cannot wait. So I'll see you guys in that one. And keep in mind, if you guys wanna try out those cleaning wheels, the same wheels that we cleaned up the engine with, cleaned up the flywheel cover or the clutch cover, flywheel cover. So if you guys wanna try out one of those wheels for free, I am doing a giveaway on them until Friday, April 3rd. So all you have to do is submit your order on Prime for $10 or more, and I'll throw in one of those cleaning wheels for free. Make sure you note cleaning wheel in the instructions box. So uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the top end video. And until then, stay safe out there and keep it Prime.